well, you're pretty familiar with medium-sized numbers like your age or your weight or the price of a car or something like that. But when it comes to very large numbers or very small ones, well, it's a bit of a different matter. For instance, you know that water is made up of molecules and they're very, very small. Do you think you can guess how many of them there would be in this bucket? I think I put about, say, three litres of water in the bucket. What would you say? 10,000? 10 million? Or... 10,000 million? Well, it's a very large number. Well, I suppose I could work out a name for a number like this using words like a hundred million billion billions or something like that. But by the end of the program, you'll be able to write down that number using just four symbols. A zero, a one, a two, and a six. And saying a, a number like that in words won't present any problems either. Well, that's one sort of number we'll be dealing with. We'll also have a bit to do with decimals and with negative numbers. And here's Alan Solomon of the Maths Faculty to tell you about these. Well, talking about negative numbers, what do you think about this? Not a lot, I hear. Well, to show you that even negative numbers can be fun, we've invented a little game to explain them. It consists of a rather magnificent jackpot donated by Mike at the end of this track, and I start off at zero, and I take the number of steps indicated on a dice that Mike is going to throw. And this is the dice. You'll be familiar with it, so let's get cracking. Off we go. It's a five. One, two, three, four, five. And we'll record that move as zero, add five, equals five. A four. One, two, three, four. Hey, Mike, you know, I think I like this game. Well, I don't think I do so much so I'm going to change the rules. And I'll get rid of that dice, which obviously isn't a very good one, and use this one instead. Now, that's got a one and a two and a three on it, and it's also got a minus one, a minus two, and a minus three. Well, it's a new dice, new game. Start from zero again. All right. OK. Now, the rule's quite simple, Alan. If I throw a plus, you take a forward step. If I throw a minus, you take a backward step. All right. So we're off. A two. One, two. Hmm, i better improve on that. Ha-ha! Minus two. That's one, two, backwards. I'm back where I started again. Because two add minus two equals zero. Minus three. That's one, two, three, backwards which we record as zero add minus three equals minus three. And it seems logical, now that I'm on the negative side of zero, to record where I am by using negative numbers. Hey, what's that? Well, that's the forfeit, you see, because you're going to have to put into that pink pig on minus 10 just the same amount of money as I've put in the jackpot on plus 10. So you're not as generous as I thought you were, Mike. <laughs> All right. Minus three. One, two, three, backwards. And that takes him to minus six because minus three add minus three equals minus six. Minus one. That's one backwards. Look, Mike, I'm fed up with walking backwards. Why don't you introduce another dice and give me another chance? All right, fair enough, fair enough. Well, what I'm going to do now in that case is I'm going to use this one as well. Now, that's got three green faces with a plus on them and three minuses on red faces. So, new dice, new game, start at zero again? Fair enough. All right. Now, the rule's quite simple, Alan. If I throw the green color dice, that's the plus, you go in the green direction, the plus direction. If I throw the red dice, you go in the minus direction. Right. 
and the rest's all the same as before. So let's get going. Plus, plus two. So plus I face in the plus direction and two steps. One, two. Well, we'll do something about that. Haha, <laughs> minus two. Minus, that means I face in the minus direction and I just take two steps. And I'm back at zero again. Two subtract plus two equals zero. Well, let's press on and hope for the best. Minus, haha, <laughs> minus, minus two. Minus, that means I face in this direction, but minus two, I take two steps backwards. Zero subtract minus two gives plus two. Minus, minus, minus one. Minus means I face in this direction, but minus one, one step backwards. We no, I really think this game is improving, actually. Yeah, well, we really have to do something about that, Alan. So, plus one. Plus three. Minus, minus three. Plus one. Ah, I've got it. <laughs> <laughs> So now he's counting the loot in a corner somewhere, but the question is, how is he counting it? Well, let's see what we've got here in this bag of loot. Well, it doesn't look very much. Mind you, knowing Mike, it could just as easily have been only pence. But anyway, we've got 10 pounds here. One, two, three, four, five, six, 17, that's seven. Three tens, that's 30, and five, P. So it's 17 pounds and 35 pence. Well, you're probably familiar with the fact that we can represent this sum of money by using familiar decimal notation. So that would just be 17 pounds. And then I better use a decimal point to separate the pounds from the pence and 35 pence. But what you probably may not know is that we can use this decimal system for any numbers, not just for money. In the general case, this would be one lot of 10. This would be seven units of whatever we're talking about. Three tenths, five hundredths. I suppose we could have thousandths. And in fact, we could extend this as far as we want, either in this direction or in the other direction. So in theory, at any rate, we can represent any number we want by using this decimal notation. Well, that's all very well in theory, but if you have to deal with very large or very small numbers, the decimal system isn't all that convenient. For example, take a number like this one. Now, that's a one with nine zeros. There's even some confusion about what it's called. The Americans call it a billion, the French call it a milliard, and the British haven't made up their minds what to call it at all. And that's one of the problems with large numbers, just naming them. Another one is recognizing them when you see them with all these zeros to count, you tend to lose count. And then there's working with them. Now we can get around all these problems by using power of 10 notation. And I'd like to show you this starting with the hundreds. Now you know a hundred is simply equal to 10 times 10. So we can write that instead as 10 to the 2. And I can put a new label up here on the hundreds column, simply calling it 10 to the 2. 2, because we've got two tens multiplied with each other. Now, in just the same way, the thousands column, a thousand, you know, is equal to 10 times 10 times 10. So we can write that as 10 to the 3. And I can relabel the thousands column 10 to the 3. 3, because we've got three tens multiplied with each other. And so on all the way down. 10,000, I can label 10 to the 4, 100,000, 10 to the 5, a million, 10 to the 6, 10 to the 7, 10 to the 8. Here comes our billion, 10 to the 9. And I could go on forever if I wanted to in that direction. So here's a nice way of handling very big numbers. For example, the number of molecules of water in that bucket. That's 1 in the 10 to the 26 column. So we can simply write that as 10 to the 26. Right, so we know how to name large numbers and to recognize them, hopefully, when we see them. What about working with them? 
Well, for that, you just have to remember one very simple rule, and that is that when you multiply a number by 10, say, for example, 100, so you move up one column to the left to get 1,000, then the index just goes up by 1, from 2 to 3. If you go from 1,000 to 10,000, the index goes up by 1, from 3 to 4. So that should give us some idea about how we might label the rest of these counting columns. You see, we've got 10 to the 4, 10 to the 3, 10 to the 2, so we can carry right on. 10 to the 1, 10 to the 0, 10 to the minus 1, 10 to the minus 2, minus 3, 10 to the minus 4, minus 5, minus 6, and I could go on forever in that direction. But let's just check that the rules are working all right. For example, remember, to go from tens to hundreds, up a factor of 10, the count up here goes from 1 to 2. So, if the rules are OK, to go from units to tens, we should go up by 1, and we do, from 0 to 1. Tenths to units, we go up by 1, from minus 1 to 0. So we've got a perfectly consistent system here, which is OK for counting very large numbers or very small numbers. And you'll get some practice with this in the text, including all the rules about multiplying and dividing all these numbers.